of Rat Cell Review, and we are back with our show called Screams from the Grave. That's right. I've been doing some uh, work on the uh, last two episodes, by the way. Oh, have you? And cool. uh, yeah, I have to show you. I, I did some nice little artwork, and I think it came out pretty cool. And I actually I'm took curious, the song I'm that excited. you. I took the song that you got the name of the show from, and I used that now in the intro. See, doesn't it work great? It works perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, today, I picked an album, Halloween, Pink Bubbles Go Ape. A pretty good album, despite the... Uh, and y- you know what's funny about that? And I, I think I can attribute it a lot to the time when I got into Halloween, which was like the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. So kind of looking back on it from a different perspective, but most of the people I talked to, you know, didn't really hate this album. Everyone kind of felt it was a little mediocre compared to the yeah. first three, but it seemed to still be pretty well liked. But reading through some of these reviews, I felt were pretty harsh on it because, I mean, even though um, it does have some more pop elements and strays a little bit, there's still... Like three songs on here, I would straight up call classic Halloween. Hmm. And musically, other than three songs, it doesn't really stray that far from. I mean, they did more commercial sounding stuff in Keepers 2 era. Uh, right. yeah. th- that one B side, Living Ain't No Crime, that's one of my favorite songs they do. And it's totally uh, <laughs> <laughs> cr- crazy nights type yeah. radio song, you know? Yeah, that is, that's a that's a great song. That that should have been included on this album because that was another uh, it was a B side, you know, one of the older ones. Yeah. But uh, yeah, people give this album shit. I mean, they even give Chameleon shit, which I can understand with that album because that one's just like way far away from anything. Chame- it's far from anything well, from this album too. Like we like we said before when we uh, talked about Chameleon way way back when we first started this, we we decided it was really more of a, almost a progressive rock album than right. a Halloween album. You know, right. it was different but there's still some good stuff on there yeah yeah i, I, I mean I, I i wouldn't call it a classic but i i do think the experiment worked pretty well on a couple songs yeah yeah i think so too i, I like that album just it's a special album for me and then so is this one a lot of a lot of memories from this album and actually this is the original cd that i bought uh i didn't even have a cd player when i bought this <laughs> and, and it was 35 dollars because it was an import because uh, they were fighting with the record label at the time, EMI, and for some reason they wouldn't let them into the United States with all the albums. Which is why all like the the logos you'll see like different uh, Halloween logos on some of the albums. Some will have uh-huh. like uh, a pumpkin or the world on it or whatever. Uh, there's just something going on. I don't remember exactly what. But uh, weird. Yeah, but this one, yeah, couldn't buy it in in any store. Just you know, in a regular you know rack, or whatever. I mean, I did find this in the store, but. Uh, it had to be an import, and it was thirty five dollars, and my That's mother would wild. not let. Me. It is. It was wild, especially at that time, you know. But CDs were expensive anyway. I think too at that time, weren't they? Really, like back in the oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the the cheapest ones were like twenty bucks, and those were the ones that were on special. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So telling my mother I want five dollars CD plus I have no CD player. It's like no way, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. So I had to do a lot of begging and pleading to finally get it. I think she probably bought it for my birthday or whatever. But uh, I could not wait to get home and listen to this. And I actually had to bring it to my friend's house. And um, he's the only one that had the CD player. I think I only lived like two houses down. So <laughs> I went to his house and uh, recorded. But that 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 became a whole or big uh, big or, ordeal too because he could record the CD for me on the cassette, but you would have to listen to the CD. And he wasn't didn't listen to metal. He really didn't listen to music that much. And his parents hated metal, so it was kind of hard for me to get him to copy it for me. So I had to finally just go over there, and I said, just turn the volume down, and we won't hear it, and we can just record it so I can just leave you alone. Because I bar- bothered him for, like, weeks to just record this for me. Yeah, I mean, he could literally leave the speakers off and still record it to tape yeah. and have it be yeah, fine. That's, that's what I ended up doing. And I finally had the cassette, and... Uh, my little copy of it, and I was finally able to listen to it, and uh, it, it was a little bit of a shock because, you know, like, like we were talking when we started, it's a little bit different from the uh, older stuff, but it's still Halloween. There's still some Halloween element, uh, elements in that song and this album, you know. Mm-hmm. It's a lot lighter. I, 
It is a lot lighter, and I mean, you can definitely tell, you know, they lost a big member and contributor in Kai Hansen because yep. there's, a, there's three different types of songs here. There's a couple that are outright bad, some that <laughs> are just kind of average and, like, float in the middle, and then a couple classics, but, uh, you know, the ones that are average have potential. It's just... Some of the melodies I'm not nuts about, or little things like that with the songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally get it because Kai Hansen was like the driving force of the band, pretty much. You know, he started the band, so when he left, it just everything had to change. And then the new guy, Roland Grappau, he wasn't really. I mean, he did similar music to this. I don't know if you ever heard his other band, uh, Rampage probably have i i i've heard a couple songs which is funny because i like them in halloween like that interview i'll yeah. mention that here in a second but um everything else he's done outside of this i find is playing just really pretentious and kind of boring really well i'm but, a big um, fan of master plan <laughs> really but, i can't yeah. stand master plan i think really? that is awful that stuff puts me to sleep man oh, oh man that's that, no, that band is just so, so boring to me. It's worse than oh, the Blackmore's Night album. Really? The first two albums were awesome. And it kind of went downhill after that, but I don't know. I think you should listen to the first two albums again. Those are like classic albums. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we're gonna have I'll, to I'll, 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 I'll get around to it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I guess you could always pick it for this. I could. I have to. So. Yeah, we're going to have to. But, uh, but um, yeah. anyway, yeah, so I was reading, um, you know, through, I think it was a Rolling Stone interview. I don't know, some article about this album. And they were mentioning different interviews with people. And one of them it linked to was an older one with Roland Grappau. And he was saying, yeah, well, when I joined Halloween, started writing this, I kind of changed my style as to how I would play it. And more, how would this sound as a Halloween song? And yeah. I think that helped a lot here and gave it more better continuity than it would have had otherwise. Because honestly, the songs he writes, I think, are the strongest ones on here. Yeah, I think so too. And and the one that's like the biggest hit, uh, the chance off of this album. That's like, that, oh, well, first of all, that's, that's the best song on this album. I was gonna say that's the one, one of the ones I think is a true Halloween classic. That's a really, really good song. I mean, that's. <clears throat> That's a little time level there, you know. Right, it's, yeah. 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 It's very classic. It's, it's funny how he was able to do that because, you know, he's new to the band. And just to come in and write a song like that, that sounds like something anybody else anybody else would have wrote. That's it, pretty amazing, you know. Yeah, it, it just sounds like the logical follow-up to Keepers. Right, yeah. Yeah, there, it's... But, uh, yeah, he also wrote uh, Someone's Crying. That's another. That's a very. That's another speed metal yeah, yeah, kind of speed metal type song. And I'm trying to think what other ones that he writes. Yeah, on. back on the street. Back on the street, yep. which is pretty speedy too. And um, mankind, which is the epic, but it has different parts where you know it goes speed about. Yeah, Why that not? that's probably mankind is probably my favorite song off of this. And then would be the chance. Mankind is just a completely different song that. You would never even think that they would do something like that, you know? Yeah, I would pick The Chance, Mankind, Someone's Crying, Back on the Streets, and Kids of the Century is my favorites off here. Those are the best songs on here, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah they are. They are. But, and, you know, Kids of the Century is a good example, and that one, Kiss Gay or Kisk, however you pronounce it, because yeah. I can never remember. But, um, you know, he wrote that one completely himself, and that one, it sounds like Halloween, but there's nothing memorable about it. You know, the melody, it's okay, but it isn't, like, inspiring, like, Dr. Steen-type level, right. where I want out. Yeah. yeah. I totally get it. But, um, I was going to say, uh, oh, <clears throat> the one thing that I noticed is this god awful album cover <laughs> so i was reading a bunch of reviews 
today and everyone that was talking about that they were mentioning the album cover and they're like oh i wish the chick was naked then at least we yeah. have something good to look at right. it's like <laughs> well you guys lack a lot of imagination because it's not really all that hard to... no it's not I mean, <laughs> you know the tops are like not all the way up there so whatever but but yeah, yeah. i don't get the it's... fish you think it'd be a fucking pink flamingo or something or they'd at least paint the fi- pink fish or i don't know is it a pink salmon no uh, it, it could be I, I don't know but they at least did put a, a gorilla in the back of there so there is some kind of you know ape thing going on yeah <laughs> and you know the only other uh, there is no bubbles i mean there's a guy taking a bath in a freaking uh you know uh, bed or whatever you know what's yeah you know what's funny? i didn't realize until oh there's I the bubbles i see today. them now that i can see it yeah the, the, uh, where gorillas, are they the gorilla's doing the bubbles Oh, they're, okay. They're very hidden. If you don't, if you have the CD, you can barely see it. But now I have the, the vinyl; I can see it. I was gonna say I only have the Japanese CD, so I can't. I couldn't see it because I was thinking that earlier. I was like, man, I swear there were bubbles somewhere on this cover, but I don't <laughs> see them anywhere. Now I know why. I haven't had the vinyl in years. Yeah, they're they're very hidden. And there's a flamingo for some reason. I don't know why. Well, the reason why they they did all this weird shit is because they wanted to do something sort of like uh, Pink Floyd. You know, how they did all the weird imagery and things, and yeah, I mean, this is just weird. I mean, the guy on the back, he's got eggs on his face. I mean, <laughs> why? I... <laughs> uh, oh. I have no idea. And I'll break out some of my collection. Here's the the single "Kids of the Century," a bunch of people <laughs> and a baby <laughs> with eggs on their faces, on their eyes. It's just so freaking weird. It's weird. And like I showed you before, that, yeah. I would buy to have that. That's <laughs> just that's fun. And this thing is this is it this one? Oh yeah, this one is pretty cool. This has the uh, like all these limited edition uh, pictures inside. Oh cool. Of, like all the band members and stuff. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Yeah. And then I think there's another one that opens up on the inside or something that I didn't get. But yeah, but I got yes, a lot of versions. Five I got CDs. It looked like I got the vinyl. Actually, I think I have another vinyl too because uh, one of them wasn't playing right, so I bought another one. So that's one. Then this is the remaster uh, that was released not too long ago, 2006, and it's got the bonus disc on it. So that's two. That's the original one I have. This is a Russian version. That also is um, the EP, the original uh, Halloween EP on. Oh no! Oh yeah, it has the EP and then has some other other bonus tracks on here, so that's kind of weird. What a weird combination! Yeah, those Russian ones are really weird. Uh, and then here's the one that you had, the Japanese one with the, uh, yep. the bonus track on it. Shit and lobster, which I would have much preferred to close the album out over your turn. That is for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. No, I no, not your song. turn. No, I, I'll well, I'll get into it more. Oh, and then here's another <laughs> single, number one. That's another one. That was oh, hard cool. to get. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of a lot of stuff on this album. But um, yeah, I think uh, what is it? Number one has the uh, blue suede shoes on it. Oh, yeah. no, maybe that's yeah. Kids of the Century. Actually, now that Oops, I'm saying everything that. just dropped out of it. Uh, this one has I don't know how you pronounce this. Les Hambird. Uh, Ham Hamb- bourgeois. There you go. Thank you. Walkways, and then run with the pack. Yeah. And the Kids of the Century has blue suede shoes on it. Okay. That was a pretty good cover. Yeah, it's okay. I don't know. It's all right. I enjoyed it. But, uh, yeah, like you mentioned, I mean, Shit shit and Lobster, that's the bonus track for the Japanese. I I like Your Turn. I really like that song, even though it's it almost sounds like it's a country song in the beginning. Then it has, like, a little heavy part. But that the chorus is awesome. I, I just love the chorus. Just See, very uplifting, and it's just I that know, really just nice fell chance. flat for me. That I I hear what they're trying to do, how they're trying to make that uplifting, like Halloween song with it, but yeah. it just didn't do it for me. The chorus and the melody fell flat. Yeah, yeah no, I, I get it. Sometimes it's it's one of those songs that I do like it, but then I don't go back to listen to it, you know, all the time. Huh. You know, but I do like this song. But actually, that one's not my least favorite one. No, I there's no way with you another one. But um, there's no way. <laughs> no, the, the your turn is another one of the ones where I'm like, yeah, it's okay, but it's it's missing something. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. 
But uh, you got the, the opening track, Pink Bubbles Go Away. That's kind of retarded. It's just, you know. It just Yeah, almost, they should cut that off. It I, shouldn't have been on there. You know. Uh, Kids of the Century, great opening track. Uh, Back on the Streets, really great song. Typical, I think, typical great Halloween groove. type song. Yep. It's got a um, great groove to it, too. Yeah. yeah. Again, great chorus. Uh, Kids of the Century, great chorus. Oh, Back uh, on the Streets also has a little bit of them, uh, them speedier runs. Like yeah. uh, Keepers 1, even what? Really, even Walls of Jericho era. That one and the chance. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Uh, song number one. I mean, it's a slow song, but that, I, get, I love that song. It's just I, I like hate it. that song. It is god <laughs> awful. It is bad pop. That song is worse than Windmill. I I can say that. I hate number one. It is. Oh my god. I can't believe that was Whitecast only track where he wrote it by himself and that is what he came up with it is just an <laughs> off boring attempt at a pop ballad it's it's so disappoints me i don't know i guess <sighs> it the lyrics are kind of funny because it's like now it's time for happiness <laughs> well yeah but your turn mentions mickey mouse and that one right. actually yeah, works yeah, out yeah. pretty good yeah. But yeah, number one, it has goofy lyrics. The melody doesn't really work for me. The whole the whole song sounds kind of off kilter, like it's almost not finished. Yeah. It's just, it's not the quality level I expect from Halloween. They can do songs like that and do them good. That's just, I don't really hold it against this, though, even the songs I don't like so much because it's a transitional record. You know what I mean? I'm just surprised at how that is and who it was written by. I mean, I'd expect it from Kisk, but come on, Mike, the fuck? (laughs) Oh, that was another thing, too, that I didn't think to mention this. Like, uh, with the first, actually, the first three albums, there there was more fantasy-based type songs. And this album has a lot of, um, like, environmental issues. It's much more grounded in reality. Yeah, Yeah. 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 which is cool, you know? They they needed to, uh, to change it up a little bit, you know? And it does work, but then you got heavy metal hamsters, which was supposed to be a B side, and they had a big argument about this song, and they threw it on here, and it's like, <laughs> no. You, 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 you know what I find funny about that? So uh, that was another thing I was reading uh, in one of the interviews with Wyketh and the fight with the record label and how they want it on there. It's an entertaining song. It mm-hmm. is catchy, but it. It works much better as a B-side or a non-album track. Like, um, And then as far as them thinking it was the best thing on here, (laughs) you you know, the the chance is catchier than this. Kids of the Century is catchier than this. Because Heavy Metal Hamsters is, of course, is a little bit too long. It sounds like they wrote it for somebody's kid that was in the White the Ninja right. Turtles or something. I mean, yeah. it's it, it it's cute, but <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it was a bad decision on the label's part, I feel like. But I actually don't dislike the song. I noticed a lot of people hate it, and it really yeah. doesn't bother me all that much. I, I find it enjoyable. It's just... Yeah. It's very odd where it sits on the album. It really shouldn't follow number one. No, not at all. Yeah. No. But yeah, it, I mean, it's a, like you said, it should really just have been a B-side. And you got, you got Shit and Lobster that's a B-side, uh, well, bonus track and a B-side. And then you have um, You Run With The Pack. That's a B-side. Yeah, You Run With The Pack's a, a better song than Heavy yeah. Metal Hamsters. Yeah, Actually, that would Hamsters. work pretty good in that place. On the album, yeah. too, come to think of it. <laughs> yeah, either one of those songs. I mean, it would have fit so much better on here. But uh, th- thankfully, it got better with uh, Going Home. I mean, it's a little bit upbeat. Uh, but all the all Halloween songs are upbeat. But it's a little bit... Uh, it's cool. It's, it's I like that song, Going Home. Go- going Home has some of the Halloween speed in it, you know. And, and it's re- But it's one of those ones where I was saying, you know, it's, it's like a typical Halloween song, yeah. but it's not... Like popping out at you, like Halloween right. or I went out or Judas, but right. it's yeah. it's still good, you know. I I wouldn't skip it honestly. I can listen to this one all the way through, except for number one, and that's just because the <laughs> chorus gets to me. I can make it through like four minutes of that song in the last minute and thirteen <laughs> seconds. I'm like, I can't listen to repeat the shit anymore. I have to. <laughs> I don't know. I, I always love that song for some reason. Right. 
It's, mm. it's funny though because I actually really like this album. I just feel like I'm cutting on it so bad, but that one song just it's bothers right. me so much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, someone's crying. We talked about that one earlier. Uh, the fastest, probably the fastest song on this album, I think, right? Yeah, that one really leaps out at you, like Walls of Jericho. I mean, yeah. really, that's um, it's really powerful in how it's written too. It's almost, it's almost Man of War level type power metal with the um, not the speed, but the way the song is presented i can maybe the way it's mixed like, it yeah. sounds epic is what yeah, i'm getting it at. Does. Yeah. there's a lot of really <laughs> really cool guitar solos it starts with like the guitar solo and stuff and yeah, it's really good and then the uh the, the solo in the middle is just you know really awesome i was gonna say that's actually my favorite solo on this album um it i mean it really stands out it's really good and it's really unique someone's crying i really feel like is a bona fide halloween classic song you know like yeah. any best of they do should include that song. <laughs> it should. It should. Uh, then it gets to Mankind, and that, that's the standout track for me. It's, it's the longest song on this album. Uh, really something different music-wise, and the, even the lyrics uh, deals with the, the environment and all that. And uh, it's just my favorite song off of this album. It's, uh, it's like that long-lost Halloween song that really nobody ever mentions about, you know? And, you know, I find that really surprising. And it's it's funny now that you mentioned the Pink Floyd thing. I actually kind of understand it a little bit because this is really a progressive rock tune done in a yeah. Halloween way. And it, it's excellent. It's great. This is another yeah. classic. And I'm really surprised it's um, not as talked about. Yeah. Yeah, not at all. I don't really ever hear anybody mention that song no because they go a lot of mountains and valleys in this i mean it goes a bunch of different to right it's really a sprawling song but it never gets boring yeah and even like it doesn't like get boring with the lyrics too it's like change every time even the chorus changes like a little bit every time it's not always the same chorus and same verses so it's it's a good it's a good song mm -hmm. uh but then that gets thrown out the window and we get to i'm doing fine crazy man <laughs> which which really tries to trick you with a really cool acoustic part in the beginning, by the way. Uh, and then it just yeah. whoosh, explodes yeah. on itself. Oh, my gosh. It's just a terrible... Which, a, I wrote down it's a stupid song. <laughs> it is a stupid It's really song. no other way to describe it, but it is a stupid I, song. <laughs> I guess the moral of that story is don't let the bass player write anything. No, well, no. The bass player actually does all the B-sides, pretty much. Yeah, well, he wrote that one, and it's. He did write this one. I have to read it again. I don't remember. I don't him remember and right. Kiske. Yeah. So then, then you know, you could see why that should have been another B side. You know, they, they could have got rid of this one, and and the other. What was the other song? Um, oh, uh, Heavy Metal Hamsters, and yeah. put You Run with the Pack, and Shit and Lobster, and this pro this album probably would have been at least an eight or a nine. Oh, you know? easily, it would have made it that much stronger because the. Both of those songs, Heavy Metal Hamsters and I'm Doing Fine, Crazy Man, you know, they like stop the album dead because yeah. the thing I forgot to mention about Heavy Metal Hamsters was even though it's upbeat and it's fun, it's a total sleaze rock song, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it sounds like they covered a Sea Hags track or Hanoi Rocks or something like that almost. Not, I love both of those bands, but it's just, it's very out of character, not only yeah. for Halloween in general, but this album that just throws it off. And then you get down to I'm Doing Fine, Crazy Man, which after following an excellent progressive track they did, just <laughs> throws it out the window with doing something weird yeah. and artsy. Yeah, here, here, listen to this like, now. <laughs> you know why every you know why everybody liked the weird shit that Lennon did? Because everybody was on fucking acid in the seventies, guys. It wasn't all that great. <laughs> That's right. But th th thankfully they get back on track with the chance. The, the best song on, on this album. Well, one of the best songs on this album. It, it's an awesome song. I mean, that's that's the first song that uh, Grab Pal wrote. Uh, when he joined Halloween, and he did a, an excellent job on this one. It's it's a monster from the vocals to the guitars, the rhythm, the melody to this song. The courses, every part of it is just great, man. This is right up there with I Want Out for yeah. me. Yeah, it's got all the Halloween staples, uh, the speed, the catchy lyrics, the dueling guitar solos to, uh, in the middle of the song. It's just everything's there. Classic yep. Halloween song. 
And uh, then it ends with a song you don't really care for, but I, I actually do like it, uh, Your Turn. I like how it starts off with that little countryish kind of intro, and, you know, it does get heavy, and, and then that really, really cool chorus. I think it's very catchy. It's, it's, it's a good yeah, song. I like it. It's just, I, I don't really care for that. I mean, it's okay. It's another one of them ones where it just kind of sits there to me. Yeah. No, I totally but, uh, get it. It's yeah. It's different. It's different for them, you know. It's it's, it's fine. It is what it is. But uh in all I'm not crazy about the production on this album. You had uh what's his name? Uh who's the guy that that produced this album? Um, Chris Sang- Chris Sangredis. Yeah. Um I I can never pronounce his last name. But uh you can ju- I can just hear his production sound on this album, you know, because all his productions pretty almost sound the same. You know, like this one. Yep. Yeah, just dead. Yep. Very I, clear, but there's like no life to them, and it, right. it could it could really pep up a couple of these tracks. Yeah, yeah, it could, but you know, it is what it is. I think they were going to use somebody else, and then they ended up using him, and you know, it was just a whole big ordeal. Um, but yeah, you know, otherwise, you know, it's it's a really cool album, and you know, it's just it's it's a classic for me. Like I said, it holds a lot of memories for me. I mean, my friends from uh, when we I was when I got this and I was in school, and they saw that I got it, and we were all Halloween fans, and of course I had to let them borrow it. But then it would go to one friend, and then that friend would let the other friend borrow it, and then that friend would let another friend borrow it, and by the time I got it back, my freaking the booklet on my CD is it looks destroyed inside. So it's just you know, it is what it is, but. Uh, you know, it's cool to you know, share CD it. to shit. <laughs> oh, they didn't do it to this one. They did it to uh, Chameleon. They actually lost the booklet completely. And <laughs> my friend ended up buying me a new one, but it was the booklet was a little bit different. But at least they replaced it. But yeah, I mean, thank God the CD didn't get ruined. So, but it was cool. You know, everybody got to hear it, and you know, I was cool for at least a little while. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> So, but I, I mean, like I said before, I, I would actually still give this this album an eight because it, it does have a lot of really great songs on here, and it's just you know, it's a cool Halloween album, you know. That's uh, I wasn't gonna quite go eight. I was gonna say seven, seven and a half, but yeah. I totally understand why you would say eight. There's yeah, just I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, a... I, you know, it's it's hard for me to judge this band uh, lower than eight because <laughs> it's my favorite band. So every every album's an eight. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, I got to give it a seven just because, like I was saying about some of it being kind of middling, like Halloween on autopilot almost. But it's it's still a good record with a couple Stone Cold classics on it. You know, yeah. it's it's really what I think of as what 80% of most albums out there are regular albums. Yeah. They're not the yeah. best thing a band ever did, but they're good and they carry on the sound. Yeah, that is exactly true. And yeah, it's just, you know, really cool album. Just some weird artwork. But yeah. And, uh, oh, here is the, I don't know if you ever, yeah, you saw the inside, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. All the weird inside shit. <laughs> I mean, there were some cool, cool pictures inside, too, in the booklet and stuff, but. Why do fish always look so surprised, man? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the the other thing about this album too, the fans apparently were so upset that there was like no pumpkins, like no pumpkin drawings in this album. <laughs> I read that, that. <laughs> that for the next album they had to bring it back. You know, but it is upsetting. Yeah. You know, they had a lot of pumpkin drawings, especially in the, the Keepers One and Two, and they were cool. You know, that's the band is called Halloween, so to not have pumpkins in there, it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, they should have at least kept the pumpkin in the logo. You know, you can make yeah. the logo a different color or whatever. It doesn't have to be orange, but they should have just kept it in there. It would have made sense, especially, even just for continuity reasons. Right, know. yeah. But finally, you know, they 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 learned their lesson, and, and they, I don't think they've really gotten rid of the pumpkins ever since. Maybe one album or two, but, mm-hmm. you know, not, not a big deal. But, yeah, that's Pink Bubble oh. going. What? And... For the dink whose review I read, I believe it was on Metal Archives. It might have been Loudwire or some other crap like that earlier. Maybe Sleaze Rocks. Who knows? But either way, you think this album is worse than Celtic Frost, Cold Lake? You deserve to be smacked because you are wrong, sir. Celtic yes. Frost is one of my favorite bands in the world. And Pink Bubbles Go Ape is way better and way more creative than Cold Lake. Yeah. Sorry, uh, funny, Tom, but we know it's true. <laughs> that's funny they would even compare this to that. Yeah, you know, I thought that was a really weird comparison. And if 
they were going to do that. I feel like they should have picked Chameleon because Chameleon was so much more of a left turn because this really is still, I can consider Pink Bubbles go a part of the classic Halloween yeah. era. The dividing line for me is Chameleon because it changed mm-hmm. so much. But Yeah. Chameleon was, I actually was reading an interview yesterday. Chameleon was more of like, oh, the band was like dissolving at that point. Mm-hmm. So it was a Michael Kiske interview, actually. And he said, basically, that album is almost like a solo album for each member. Because each member, you know, wrote their songs. And it, they didn't really think about Halloween as a band. They just thought about, all right, these are the songs I just want to do. Kind of thing. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that one know, thing that actually, yeah, bo- has always bothered me about that one. Yeah. But and I still people like would be like, oh, so you don't like that? It's, it's like, no, it's not that I don't like that song. It's I, I don't like how the songs are grouped together. Not all of them quite fit. And it's kind of <laughs> annoying because I will like that song and then the song that follows it, but they do not fit together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that album's a bit jumbled, but hey, it, it's another one that's a classic for me. So, All right, anything you know, else you want to add? No, nope. oh, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. I was going to say, Chameleon I wouldn't consider a classic, but I still don't think it's a bad album. I still think it's totally worth getting, you know. It I think so, too. Yeah. But uh, And Pink Bubbles Go Ape, I would go so far to say, is essential, guys. You know, don't yeah. leave a lot of the negative reviews out there, especially you have to remember some of these guys aren't even usually metal reviewers. And mm-hmm. if you like Halloween in the 80s, you'll like this one. Yeah, I think so, and too. It, Definitely deserves to be reappraised, I think, at this point in time. I think so, too. I'm glad you think that. <laughs> this scene, that's Thank my you. favorite band. <laughs> Thank you. It's, 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 it's nice to be right once in a while. <laughs> once in a while, yeah. But yeah, please please go out and check it out. It's probably on YouTube, so you can go check it out on there. And there's a lot of, like we said, there's a lot of really great songs on it. So give it a chance. Yeah, definitely. At least. Listen to someone's crying in the chance. And the chance, yeah. And give it mankind. a chance and listen to the chance. The chance, mankind, someone's crying, and then you'll love the rest of the album. Yep. All right. We will see you guys next time. With another scream from the grave. Because you just can't keep us buried. <laughs> 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 RatsOutReview.com, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon Music. And I think I mentioned this before. You can actually go on your little, uh, what do you call that thing from Amazon? Um, Alexa? Say yes, RatsOutReview.com. Or no, just go say Alexa, play Rats Out Review, and it will come right up. And buy a t-shirt, or I'll shake you around like an epileptic rag doll. Or, yes. conversely, if you're into that type of thing, buy a t-shirt, and I'll come shake you around like an epileptic rag doll. We can do it both ways. Have a good night, guys. (laughs) Bye.